the Accredited to Accredited Show, where real investors, not academics, help other investors to achieve financial freedom and grow their wealth. Here's your host, Gina Lofton. Hello, everyone. It's Gina, obviously. I have a, an amazing lady I want to introduce you to. Her name is Charlie Jordan Brookins, and I recently actually engaged her to help me in um, my fitness and spiritual kind of advisory goals. So um, she is the founder of Fit Through Faith. Charlie, can you just say hello to the audience and um, introduce yourself and your company and what exactly is it that you do? Sure. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I am Charlie Jordan Brookins, and I am a certified fitness trainer and health coach and multitasking mom, and I am the founder of Fit Through Faith. And Fit Through Faith really is a company that makes the connection between faith, food, and fitness, which is critical for long-term sustainable health. Uh, so that's where we begin with just making that connection. And that begins with faith, food, and fitness, right? Faith is the foundation. Food is your fuel and fitness is your battery. When your fitness is high, you have lots of energy. <laughs> when your fitness is low, you don't have so much energy. So we work on really making that personal connection with faith, food, and fitness so that everybody can live boldly in what I call your service size body. So you can be of greatest service to this world. Excellent. Thank you so much for succinctly actually um, sharing exactly what it is that you do um, with the audience. And this audience primarily are investors and we have, you know, historically focused much of our energy on the financial end of things. Um, at least I have been guilty of that, realizing that unless I have my um, body and my health and my spiritual base, all of the other stuff is um, meaningless, right? Yes. Yeah, so I um, would like for you to kind of share with us what your methodology is in, um, you know, but well, actually before we go into that, why don't you give us a little bit about your background because it's very interesting because you had a, a career in, in corporate America. And so if you could share with us what exactly did you do in corporate America um, and how long did you spend and things like that, that would be helpful. Sure. I've had a very uh, circuitous career, <laughs> I would say. Um, I went to Northwestern University as actually a radio TV film major and then um, got my MBA at UCLA. So business uh, and actually entertainment and business <laughs> have always been a love of mine. And that really kind of comes down to a love of storytelling. And so, you know, vocationally in the entertainment business, I actually was a film director a development executive, and I left entertainment as the senior vice president of original programming for a cable network. So I have, I've lived in corporate, <laughs> um, but I've always been a kind of corporate creative. Um, but through that, there's always been a through line of, of being a health and wellness advocate. You know, my first job actually out of uh, college was as an aerobics instructor at Valley's Holiday Spa, so I'm really dating myself if you live in California. <laughs> Um, but uh, that, that part of it, that understanding that connection of food and fitness and adding in faith has always been a part of actually what has been sustainable in my career as a corporate executive. When I was a senior level executive, I traveled two weeks out of the month. I worked seven days a week. I had crazy hours, but I also never got sick. And I didn't log a, a, a sick day because of the way that I ate and the way that I moved my body and I kept my immune system strong. So it does health and wealth, you know, are, are very intricately, you know, tied together as well as just how you feel, having energy, being able to do things outside of the office, right? Being able to have energy for your children or for your hobbies and for your passions, um, for building a new business. If you're, if you are in a job right now and, and your job is your investor, for your next life, then you need energy to do that. And, and all that comes from knowing the right foods to eat and moving your body in a way that's sustainable. Excellent. So um, can we talk a little bit about how you actually made that transition from, like I said, corporate America, that high level executive role into your new business? Um, and how long did that process take? A little bit about the, you know, adjustments that were made, the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> All that, yes. So um, I made the transition um, somewhat soberly uh, in that I had 
you know, really put in, um, you know, a, a seven years, you know, in that, in that senior level capacity. And I knew that it wasn't sustainable for my life. I just didn't know how long I could push myself <laughs> to to do it, and and it was a it was a contract year, and um, I was asked back, but I made a decision, um, and because I had really good cred in my company, um, we were able to transition in a way that I was able to you know at least get a little bit of a severance, which they didn't owe me because I you know leave. Um, but because, you know, when I was there, I committed to, you know, to my career and I committed to serving that company. Um, I did get a severance that gave me a little bit of a bridge uh, into this new solopreneur world. Um, but the reality is it's totally different. You know, in, in when I was in corporate, I had a staff, I had a salary, I had benefits, you have all of these things. Um, when you're a solopreneur, especially in this new digital space, you have to learn everything <laughs> um, and, and it's just you. Um, so some of the challenges are number one, just figuring out how to get to an audience that's not sitting right in front of you. <laughs> you know, how to use social media, how to do everything. Cause you're the CEO, you're the CMO, you're the CFO, you're like the COO, everything. <laughs> um, so really kind of adjusting to that. Um, there is the, the, you spend so much time interacting with your computer that sometimes you're like, oh my God, <laughs> you need human beings, you know, to, <laughs> to interact or to tell you that's good or that's not good. You have to really be able to trust your instincts um, as well as, you know, begin to gather advisors and a team around you, even when you don't have the salary yet to employ them. Um, but ideally, you know, friends and family who can give you good advice, <laughs> um, bring them around you. But it is, you know, it's, it's a different financial world. And so you obviously have to reapproach it. But when you have the faith or the trust that you know that you're doing what you're called to do, then you just have to get up and keep doing it until it manifests. It's going to take a few years. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. And despite all those people say, oh, make six figures in two months. Now in your line, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and as a passive, you know, investor, you can do something like that. Um, but as you're building an empire as a solopreneur, it's not likely that it happens quickly. It takes two to five years and being patient with that process. And, you know, again, if you have these passive income type of things, you're able to sustain yourself. Um, during that, we actually do own one property um, that, that, again, helps, but it is um, trusting the process and, you know, tightening the bootstraps along the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, thank you so much for that. And, you know, obviously I was, it was a little different for, for myself when I transitioned out of corporate America. I was, um, you know, like you said or, or may know, um, had already achieved financial freedom where my passive income exceeded my expenses. Um, so how important would that be um, for someone to make that transition versus not having their passive income exceed their expenses before, you know, they venture yeah, off? I mean, it's, it's it huge. Yeah, no, I think it does matter. I think, I think it is, let's put it this way. It's not, they're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> um, you can do it. If you need to do it, do it. I needed to do it. The passion, the passion exceeded my desire to be at my other company and knowing, and the call was now. So I made that jump. But being able and actually having the benefit or having the luxury of your passive income exceeding your expenses makes, changes the ball game because then you're really able to not have that extra anxiety, that extra fear, that extra care of how am I going to make this work financially? And you can really, you know, plow yourself in 100% creatively um, and from a business perspective. So having that as an asset, as a benefit or as a foundation to launch your new business, I would highly recommend. Um, and, you know, in, in my case, like I said, it was a timing issue as well, um, but it would absolutely change the ballgame. Yeah, no, I congratulate you and all of the other entrepreneurs that are taking that leap of faith. And um, regardless of where they are, if they uh, have the passion, they should actually pursue their, their God-given gift and their mission. So thank you for, for sharing that. So um, why is it that you feel as though this is your purpose and your, your gift? Sure. Uh, 
Hmm. Well, I mean, spiritually speaking, it really was a faith walk that kind of led me to this. It's always been, you know, I made a connection with fitness in high school um, because of dance. And, and then I actually, you know, understood, oh, there's a connection between how I eat and how my body feels or how I move. And so that food and fitness connection was really made early. But my faith connection with it, you know, again, and I, and I will speak on a, you know, whatever faith means to you, whatever spirituality means to you. I'm a Christian, so I, I speak from that platform, but this is not like a <laughs> mutually, it's like you can still connect faith, food, and fitness, whatever your spiritual belief is. Um, for me, you know, I was at a time in my life um, over 10 years ago, 11 years ago, where I was just disconnected. And so I started doing what I called faith walks. <laughs> and I would just walk with the intention of direction, with the intention of hearing from, you know, for me, it's the Holy Spirit, whatever your spirit <laughs> is, you know, in terms of how you connect spiritually, um, I was intentional on hearing a word and getting that uh, connection. And on that walk, many, 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 many weeks and probably months in, you know, I heard my people are dying. And that connection for me was, oh, you're right. <laughs> so that meant that I'm supposed to do something about it, you know, and that's when, you know, I kept, you know, for me praying and I got the vision for Fit Through Faith. And, but that was 11 years ago. And so I didn't do everything I was supposed to do then um, because I got this great job. And, you know, and again, I believe that I was supposed to be there for that season, but I also believe that this season is now and that it is my purpose to be a bridge to break through for people to understand that faith and fitness connection. Because once you get it, once you get that connection with how your body works and how your body feels, and, and most importantly, that you have a purpose in this world that you need your health to support, then the game changes. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you so much. And actually, um, Charlie, you um, have uh, offered my audience a, um, a tool, which is called a radical label reading guide. Can yes. you explain what that is? And for anyone that is listening um, to this episode, you can just come to the website, which is adainvestor.com and get this um, tool. I'm learning about the tool from Charlie. So Charlie, can you explain exactly what this tool is and how yeah. it's important for us to understand the labels and the food? Yes. Yeah. So, so labels are, you know, if there's kind of one thing like, what can I do today, Charlie, to be healthier? <laughs> Read labels. And unfortunately, you know, big food has kind of hijacked our taste buds and waistlines. And we kind of blindly allow that to happen because the information is there, but because we've either been eating something so long or on the package it says, you know, fat free, or it, it has all of these things to throw us off the scent of the label, um, we don't read it. And if we would just turn it over and read all of the ingredients that we're actually ingesting, all the words that you can't pronounce, all the 56 names of sugar, all of those things, you know, all the, the hydrogenated oils and the trans fats. You're looking for words that you can pronounce. You're looking for words that you can understand. You're looking for short labels. Once, you see, once I see a label that has like 40 ingredients, it's like, I don't even want to, there's no reason to eat that food. So if you're going to eat processed and packaged foods, you want them to be minimally processed and packaged. And the only way to really control that is to read labels. And I say radical label reading because it's about not, not putting anything into your body until you know everything that's in it. And that takes time. You know, sometimes you're like, I don't have time <laughs> to figure out all this stuff, but you'll start to see the same things over and over again. You'll start to see the same emulsifiers. You'll start to see soy lecithin. You'll start to see, you know, dextrose and maltose and all these other names for sugar. You'll start to see all of these same things. And ultimately when you put something in your body that your body, your mind doesn't know how to pronounce, then your body doesn't know what it is. So it has to figure it out, right? Ultimately it does because our bodies are amazing biocomputers, but oftentimes it gets stored as fat. Whereas when you eat whole clean ingredients, even if they're minimally processed, if you know what they are, then your body's like, oh, I know what this is. So let me take these nutrients. Let me move this fiber here. Let me, and then let me give you energy <laughs> to do what you want to do versus inflammation and bloat and slowing you down and giving you the seeds of chronic disease. 
Hey everyone, I've got great news. If you visit us at a2ainvestor.com, go to the calendar tab and you will find all of the upcoming speaking engagements and where to find me. So this year coming up in July 2018, um, that is just a few months away, I will be at Freedom Fest for the third consecutive year and on a debate entitled Wall Street versus Main Street, which is better for making money with Mr. Robert Kiyosaki, Mark Lichtenfeld, and Simon Reeves. So be sure to visit us at aainvestor.com, go to the calendar and find out exactly where I will be to answer any and all of your questions, all right? I look forward to seeing you at one of the upcoming events. Yeah, no, um, it, it's amazing. So I just want to say that, um, thank you. This is obviously your gift <laughs> and your life's purpose. And I would love to be able to make it where I can understand it as passionately as you do to help others with my gift, <laughs> yes. the finance um, piece. So um, it's very complimentary. Um, and I, I thank you for sharing it with, with, with the audience here. Um, so let me ask you, Charlie, what advice can you give someone to start their journey for this healthy lifestyle um, and that's spiritually based, right? Yeah, my favorite subject. <laughs> so oftentimes, you know, the reason why diets fail um, and, you know, they, they, a lot of them obviously succeed short term because people say, oh, I'm going to do this deprivation thing um, and they get results but then they go back and oftentimes the weight comes back and it brings friends. Um, and that's because it's based on deprivation and willpower and willpower is limited. Like you have willpower, it exists, but by the end of the day, that same part of your brain that has tasks and emails and all of those things is wiped out, right? So we don't, it's not sustainable. Fit through faith is based on spirit power. Spirit power is available in abundance and it's available everywhere. So the first thing is really connecting to what faith means to you. And that is a purpose that's bigger than yourself, right? Because we will let ourselves down. Why? Because nobody really knows about it but ourselves. We don't let other people down because then it's a, or well, we, we work harder <laughs> at, not, at not letting other people down because it has a bigger impact on us. So the first thing is, connecting to a purpose that's bigger than yourself and believing that you have a purpose to share with this world, that you have a message to manifest, that you have what I call an epic impact to make on this world, because we all do. And when we begin with that, and when you have what I call a big, bold why, and we talked about this last week, a big, bold why and purpose, then you need your health to support that. And that's the, the critical faith piece. And so once you connect with faith, then I call, I, I call it the five mores. There's five mores that you can focus on. It's not about a new diet. It's not about paleo. It's not about you know, high fat, low fat, no carb. It's really about easing yourself into one day at a time, a healthier lifestyle. So the five mores are number one, more plants, right? Plants are healing. They're whole. They give us fiber. They give us health and they help prevent disease. So just more plants, whatever you're doing, eat more, especially vegetables, look for those five colors. Second thing is more water, right? We are made 60% to 75% water. So we need water to live. We need water to you know, hydrate our brain for performance, for activity, and it helps us feel good and to look good for our skin. So more water, whatever you're doing, just do more and crowd out some of those sugary beverages, some of those sodas. God gives us the most refreshing drink ever. And then you can spa water, cucumbers, strawberries, whatever works for you, but more water. The third thing is, and this is, comes as no surprise, more physical activity. Whatever you're doing, do more. Again, this is for our muscles and our limbs. This is for our heart, it makes our heart stronger. It makes our, you know, it slows down the aging process. So more physical activity. You know, the goal is to get 150 weeks of moderate to vigorous or moderate activity um, each, you know, for the week. But whatever you're doing, just do more of it. The fourth one is more home cooking. So I don't know how best to say this. Somehow home cooking has just really moved way out of our, uh, <laughs> 
uh, out of our priority because of the busy multitasking lives that we have. But when you don't do it, you're basically giving other people um, power to take over your body, right? Mm -hmm. I say home cooking is like your declaration of independence from big food for hijacking your taste buds and your waistline. Mm -hmm. And so even though it takes energy and it takes work, we must cook more at home. And then you don't even need to read labels, right? <laughs> So home cooking, again, whatever you're doing, just do more of it. If you're not doing any of it, do one recipe a week, right? Or, and I don't even use a ton of recipes. It's just about buying a bunch of fresh ingredients and putting them together. Mm -hmm. And then the last more is just more sleep. We've got to get seven to nine hours of sleep. Uh, it's, it's a non-negotiable. The sleep organization says begin with sleep. So if you're, if you're not getting seven to nine hours, then your life is too big. Like you have to start with sleep and then build your life around it. And if again, you're getting five hours and you have to take a look at your life and say, what is it that I need to do to get those seven to nine hours? There are hormones that are released that flip flop when we don't get enough sleep. So why our waist grows when we're not getting enough sleep is because the hormone that tells you that you're full actually goes down and the hormone that tells you that you're hungry goes up. So that late night snacking also is because of that hormone imbalance. Our brain doesn't get recharged and juiced. We're tired. It impacts our health. It impacts our safety. It impacts, impacts our longevity. We must get sleep. So if I was going to give, you know, the piece of advice, you know, faith first and then your five mores. Got it. No, thank you so much. Um, so if you actually were traveling, let's just say two weeks out of the year, like you shared earlier, and some of the audience might actually do that. How can they keep up with these five mores when they're like, you know, on the road for two weeks out of the year? That seems to be, at least for me, sometimes of a challenge. So can you maybe share some techniques that you used in order to achieve that? Sure. I, I think one of the big things, uh, in addition to all the five mores, is really just planning. And, you know, kind of goes back to that quote, if you, uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Mm -hmm. And when you're traveling, it, it's imperative that you plan. And one of the things that I would do is find out, you know, where my hotel was and what was close, because I'm a vegan. So I would look for, you know, vegan restaurants that were nearby, where's the closest Whole Foods, um, making sure that you have a refrigerator in your hotel, ideally. Um, and then it's about pumping stuff up. You want to have fruit in your room. You want to have, um, I would get you know smoothie packets the ones that you know making sure that they're all natural ingredients having some almond milk and i would just make a you know smoothie in the morning um salads uh you know most restaurants you know they're restaurants <laughs> so they have food that's off the menu and so just creatively looking at the menu and saying number one how is it cooked and just putting together food that I could eat. So I would get a salad and then add avocado and add, you know, not get their creamy dressing, but use olive oil. And do you have balsamic vinegar? Of course we have balsamic vinegar. Okay, great. We'll see these vegetables that are, that are with this steak. I would actually like those Brussels sprouts and put together a veggie plate. Oh, and do you have some extra protein? Do you have, oh, you have black beans. Awesome. Can I get some brown rice and black beans and put that together? Because especially most of us who are traveling, you know, have some kind of expense count. <laughs> um, and so, you know, you're, you can, you're, you're at restaurants that are actually there to cater to serve you. Now, there are obviously some restaurants who are like, we're not going to make any changes, but not any of the restaurants that, um, you know, that you would likely be going to because again they're there to serve you um so the key is and then snacks making sure that you have your favorite nut mix you know having your sunflower seeds and your raisins and your walnuts and so i would always have those around and and there are, are some bars that you can get again read the ingredients to make sure it's not all sugar um just to have you know just to tide you over from one meal to the next and the, the key is really understanding the kind of food that you love and how strategically to get it and it's just it, it takes once you get used to it it's just not that difficult um because you know again it's where's the whole foods <laughs> you know and and making sure that you have things around you that are going to support your lifestyle yeah no thank you so much for that interesting that when um i'm starting on this journey of my faith and my fitness and food 
you talk a lot about going back to your upbringing and it's making you actually behave in a certain way. Can yes. you share a little bit with um, everyone about what that kind of um, epiphany is? <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, the thing, I, I have this whole workshop that I do called Flip Your Script. And it's about rewriting your health story. And the reason why a lot of us kind of get stuck in our, you know, the same insanity of, oh, I did this diet and then I lost weight and then I did this diet and I keep coming back to the same place is because we haven't gone back to deal with the root. And a lot of our faith, food, and fitness is impacted with how we grew up. And so it's really about going back and like, what were the foods that you were fed and that you love? I call it mind muck. <laughs> you know, there's your DNA, there's your culture, there's your gender, there's all of these things that impact the labels that we put on ourselves and all of those impact the way that we eat. And so it's about kind of deconstructing those and getting to the root so that you can really clear the path and say, oh, that's not even true. <laughs> Like the reason, or, you know, I had a client who had this potato chip thing. This is a, a really great example. And she couldn't kick the, the, the potato chip thing. And we had gone through a, you know, a cleanse and we're really trying to figure out like what it was. I was like, is it salty? Is it crunchy? Like, what is it about the potato chip? And when she took the time to really deconstruct it and go back, because I said, well, when was your first experience with a potato chip? Like, what is, <laughs> like, what is it? And she said, you know what? my mom used to give me potato chips with my sandwiches every day. And so there's a comfort with potato chips. And so I was like, okay, if that's what we're solving for, then maybe it's about calling your mother. Maybe it's about connecting with friends. It's not about the chip. We can give you a crunch in some popcorn <laughs> with some nutritional yeast on it. And then let's fill that emotional space with something else that actually is really meaningful. Yeah, no, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And so one of the observations that I actually made with myself was having to finish all of the food on my plate, regardless of whether or not I was full or not. And that was kind of something that I was always told. And I think it's a, it's a bad habit to do yes. that, you know? And um, so getting down to what the root cause is for whatever your, um, you know, intake of food is, is helpful, um, for sure. Definitely. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, what are some last minute, um, let's just say words of wisdom that you would like to share? I know that you're pressed for time, but I want to make sure that people know how to get a hold of you, um, and can follow you because you have so many amazing tools that you can share with everyone. And I want to make sure that they are able to get those. Awesome. Well, my, uh, my website is fitthroughfaith.com, which is T-H-R-U. Um, so you can sign up actually for my newsletter and stuff on the website. Um, I also am on Facebook at Fit Through Faith. Would love for you to like my page. Uh, as well as I have a group called the Fit Through Faith Village. And there I really engage more. Um, that's why I love groups. We do challenges, you know, a lot of fun stuff there. And then you always know what's going on. And then Instagram, I'm at I am Fit Through Faith. So those are, you know, kind of all the ways that I would love to, uh, to be in touch with you. If there's any way that I can serve anyone in your audience, you know, that is my heart to do. Um, and, but I think in terms of closing, it's really understanding that faith, food, and fitness fuel your future. And really it's, you know, what's on the end of your fork determines your tomorrow. And it's that connection with really understanding how everything is intricately connected. You know, God created us perfectly. He created perfect food for that body. When we eat that perfect food, we actually have the energy to fulfill our purpose. And so that's why, you know, today, not tomorrow, but today, when we make healthier choices today, then we are leading to a healthier tomorrow. Yeah, no, I, I thank you so much for that. And, you know, I just want to share too, like getting down to my why and sharing this publicly. It's um, for me, it's the medical industry is so broken. Um, and if we are going to, you know, fulfill our life's mission, then, you know, I have to take responsibility for this part of my life because relying upon anyone other than that um, is pretty dangerous in my opinion um, with, I don't even know what the healthcare industry does or how much things cost or where to get help from um, because it's, you know, it's such a, a, 
a very confusing um, industry yeah, as it is today. So I, I want to say thank you so much, Shirley, for all of your um, advice, your insight, and please come to the website, a2investor.com, and get this radical label reading guide. It is an um, amazing document, and you can begin to um, consume things that are much more healthier. So Charlie, can I maybe ask you, maybe come back in six months or a year, and, and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll do a before and after for where I, I come it. from, and I'm going to hold myself accountable with your help and yes. all of the listeners help so I can, I mean, you know, I'm publicly making a commitment to actually achieve better health. <laughs> I love it, Gina. And that like accountability and putting yourself out there is awesome. Scary as all get out, but you're not alone. And I know your audience is going to be supporting you as well. And, you know, we're going to do this together and I'm thrilled and excited about six months from now. Me too. Me too. So I will share all of the, the journey with everyone. So you could see my kind of before, which you know how it is, which is pretty bad and after. <laughs> All right, Charlie, thank you so much for everything. And um, we will definitely have you back on to um, share the story and all of your incredible work. Pleasure. Thanks so much, Gina. Thanks for listening to our show. Repetition is the way we learn. If you enjoyed our show, leave us a comment below. Knowledge is to be shared, not hoarded. I knew what I needed, so I went out and got it. Started stacking up assets. Now I'm bringing in profits. I knew what I needed, so I went out and got it. Started stacking up assets, now I'm bringing in profits. Visit www.a2investor.com where you can get other tools and knowledge.